If you've experienced a relationship or multiple relationships with narcissists, you're not alone. There are so many millions of people that suffer unknowingly. That was the whole basis of creating a platform to share my experiences and the revelations that were provoked by them. You know, the thing that there is to really understand is that for anybody that's attached to these people, their emotional expressions and the behaviors are completely arbitrary, engineered only to cause reactions in others. They learn how to manipulate by taking advantage and leveraging your own triggers, your fears of abandonment, experiences that there's something wrong with you, experiences that you're not enough. These are there prior to the relationship, but this becomes the basis of the glue of the relationship because as people devalue you, they purposely trigger your own fears of abandonment. As you run from abandonment, you become more immersed and attached in the relationship. You become more concerned about measuring up. And as they're undermining your mental health, this is going to have sweeping ramifications for the rest of your life. It's going to affect your performance at work. It's going to impact you socially. And what's worse is that they will go out of their way to start to poison the minds of people that you care about. And so what happens to you is that this person will mask and right around as a healthy person, as a smart person, as a socially conscious person, has used and leveraged their false identity to make your life even more of a living hell. They go out of their way to organize smear campaigns so that when they do discard you, they're going to make sure that you don't even have an audience. And so your mental well-being will be so compromised that it will automatically conjure suspicions about your recollections and the profound confusion and dissociative experiences of having somebody that you thought you knew, that you thought was a good person, behaving this way, it dramatically impacts your own ability to navigate. The discard experience for many people is the worst experience of life because most of us would have had a really great life without these people. Like if you took a look at your life before and after a narcissist, sometimes you might feel like you've lost yourself. But you see, the purpose of everything that I've been doing is to show that you never really lost yourself. And it's even true that you never have really discovered yourself. That many people that are the victims of narcissists have special gifts, aptitudes, and creativity that they've used to better the lives of others. People that find themselves inspired by the opportunity to make a difference suffer immensely in a world of exploitation, in a world where manipulating and controlling people is considered a sign of leadership, in a world where the power imbalances, where you see the same types of abusers literally representing your country at the highest levels of government or representing titans of industry that have exploited the talents of other people and claimed that they're the pioneers of this software or they're the engineers that are behind the rockets that land on platforms in the Pacific Ocean. And so the egos that are driving humanity to destruction in a very real sense, represent a macrocosm where if you took a look at your individual experience within a relationship with a narcissist and you took a look at the broader picture of our society, a society that's built on the foundations of ego, on the foundations of validation seeking, it's no mystery why many of us, myself and you included, had to find communities, had to discover authenticity, that the most important lessons were left out of the education system. An education system based on psychology formed by narcissists over a hundred years ago that said people like us could not be trusted, could not be 
capable of understanding this world and making good decisions. And so they educated children and they created mental health disorders that didn't really previously exist. There's many people with ADHD or even autism that had ground up thinking, that had elevated levels of creative capacity, that learn through experiencing and don't need to memorize factoids. And living in a world of subjective realities, egos, false selves, false identities, people driven for more, 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 more at the cost of everyone else has created a profound power imbalance that's literally at the driving force of everything that's wrong. And when you look at the Martin Luther Kings of this world, when you look at the people with messages of peace, kindness, compassion, and love, when you look at people concerned about the environment, and then you look at how they're treated socially, you're going to start to see that narcissistic personality disorder is more than just a mental health condition. It is a prevailing way of experiencing the world that is absolutely at the driving seat of everything that's wrong with humanity. It's an anomaly that, you know, has literally been almost undetected in the world of psychology, that even people with advanced degrees cannot avoid relationships with these people. And so when you go to therapy with a narcissist, you're going to be most likely identified as the problem. And so that's the main issue with this disorder is that psychologists don't know how to identify it. They don't even really know how it originates. And there's some massive misunderstandings in terms of how mental illness forms at all or really what it's all about. And so that has been the new direction for me. It's not just about information. It's not just about answering the ruminating questions of what's going on with the new supply or, you know, is it my fault? Did I do something wrong? No, it's about letting go of all that. It's about finding yourself in a present moment state of conscious awareness where empathy becomes a superpower, where you can see right through the lies and these people become weak. These people become afraid. The people right now that have spent all this energy attacking me are going to discover the futility of that. That while I put back the pieces of my life, it only has made me stronger because I've been able to do all the things that I've wanted to do alone against all the odds, against a world where I don't really have friends in my personal life, where the vast majority of all the people I've encountered from friends, family, business, have all shared similar pathologies. And it's a lot more prevalent than we would ever want to know. If you look at this world, and you look at what's happening politically, when you look at the geopolitics, when you look at our total denial of anything related to our environment, when you look at the assault on science, when you look at the assault on objectivity, when you look at it, you're going to see that this evil, this darkness, it's everywhere. We've got to do something. We've got to wake up. We've got to break ourselves from the chains of our education. We've got to open our minds to something new. We've got to consider that this illusion of suffering that became the basis of all the gaslighting, all the exploitation, all the misery that you've experienced is something that we have the answers to, that I've had the answers and I've been doing my best to provide them in a world that has profound trouble with new information. And that is just the way it works. You know, the telescope, the idea that the earth wasn't the center of the universe, that cost someone their life. Just like the table of brotherhood cost Martin Luther King theirs. And so for me, it's important that I don't stop. 
it's important for the people that I've made a difference for to reach out to other people. It's important that the message of transformation, enlightenment is reached. It's important that new models of understanding the mind emerge. It's important that we understand a hundred years ago we were drinking mercury and that psychology is an ongoing field of study. And there's a lot of teachings that were left out. The teachings from the East that identified the ego as an illusion that restored present moment conscious awareness. And now we have the neurological understanding of meditative enlightenment. And we've identified the psychological and neurological dynamics that cause suffering in a way where there's a methodology for healing in a way that's permanent, that's not based on trauma, that's not based on what happened, but based on getting outside the boundaries of paradoxal reflexes and reactions that bring into existence emotions that are wholly inappropriate and pathological, that living your life trying to become good enough, living your life trying to fix what isn't broken, living your life as if there is something wrong with you, living your life as if your past has anything to do with who you are right now is valid as an experience, but it is not in any way, shape, or form true. That's why your experience is not even unique because you didn't even have a choice. That these reactions that dominate our lives are anomalies that don't exist in animals. And we understand why, and we understand the cures. And we will even have medical cures for people with these afflictions as well. But it's important that people know this. It's important that the things that I've discovered are brought into the world of academia. And it's important it happens before it's too late.